guys, it's Tyler from Reviews of Cool Stuff, and today we're looking at this magic marbling art. Uh, this is an art kit. They advertise that it's learning while playing, happy growth, and they talk about it being a top 10 STEM winner, and there's a reason for all that. But let me kind of walk you through what it is, and then I'll tell you the things I like about it, the things that I don't like about it, and then I'll make some recommendations. So first, it is a, it's an art kit. So it comes with a bunch of different paints. I think it says 12 colors, but it's basically the six or seven colors with like slight variations. Um, and they come in these little bottles and then it comes with a, a couple like um, dowels that you can use to spread it around, a paintbrush, um, and then some combs so you can make different designs. The idea is you make this mixing solution and then you drop the paints onto it and then you mix around the paints. Now, it's not traditional art in that like you're gonna draw a person or an animal or things like that. You're just getting creative with art. And so this is something that's really, really great for younger children who can't do more advanced art. And so it's just playing with paints, that's really cool. But then of course for adults, it's also fun too because you're learning different techniques and different styles and trying to be creative. Here's the one I made today. Um, we've done it a, a few times now. And let me just walk you through the process. So step one is you have to make the solution. And this is important. I, I saw on the reviews that I looked at on Amazon that a few people were really frustrated with this product because they learned that it took three to five hours for setup. And it does. <laughs> and so that's, that's a drawback. But if you know it going in, it's not that big a deal or not as big a deal. What we found is that you can create the solution, so you put 250 milliliters of water with one scoop of the solution, but you can actually double that and do 500 milliliters with two scoops, and then it makes twice as much so that when you're doing the art, you can go through the solution, clear it out, pour the rest of the solution in, do another batch, so you can do a bunch at the same time instead of having to do just a few sheets and then wait a few days and do a few more sheets. And so that's really important. So step one, make the solution, and I recommend at least doubling what they ask you to do. Um, but potentially, you can do about five scoops per little packet, and it comes with uh, three packets. And so you can really do like 15 different solutions. So if you wanted to do like a gallon of the solution and just all make it up at once, and then it stays good for a long time. So that's what you could do. Then you pour it into the tray, and once you have it in the tray, you just add the paints. Now, what we tried was you can do just one drop at a time in different places. You can do them close together. You can do a long uh, stretch. But we found just simply dropping them spread it throughout to start and maybe do six or eight drops on the thing, big drops. And then you can do other drops next to them and then they'll bunch up and make like almost like a checkerboard pattern or you can drop the, the next color on top of the color you already dropped. So we had fun experimenting with that and trying different things, um, especially my youngest, my eight-year-old. She had a lot of fun just trying different things. Now, as we were dropping the paint, here's something that I don't love either. Uh, the paint solidifies within the little jar and it can build up a lot of pressure. And so if you don't clear that pressure out, you can pop the top. And we found out that the hard way. That was oh meant to be so <laughs> We were kind of able to salvage it. It actually comes with like some squeegees and you can pull some of the solution out and set it aside. Um, but the easy solution to that is just stick something through the nozzle first. The, when I opened this, the paint came right up to the top but sometimes it won't, and if it seems like it's a little stuck, you might want to get a pin and just stick it in there, make sure that it goes in all the way, or you might have an explosion if a little bit of paint dried on the tip. And that solved that problem for us. So then we drop all the paint on, and then you just mess around with it. You swirl it around, you can use the combs. We found that the combs didn't make as cool designs as we had hoped, so it was easier just to use just the normal, um, wooden dowel and just kind of spread it around, uh, move it up and down, do different swirls and make different patterns that way. Haven't even tried the paintbrush because I don't know how that would be different from the dowel, 
but there's a lot you can do. Then when you're done, you pull, you put the paper in and it says three to five seconds. Now, if you put it longer than five seconds, it saturates the paper and it soaks through and then it will rip as you pull it out. So really you want it in as little time as possible just to make sure that it's completely flat. And that's an art in and of itself. It's really hard to just get it in flat, let it settle and then pull it out. Um, we made a, a bit of a mess trying this and you get better with practice, but it, it's not ideal. Of course, so even this one, I messed this one up and as it came out, some of the art messed up in different places, but it still looks cool. So it's still salvageable. Once you pull it out, then it has to sit and dry and, and typically overnight. That's kind of the whole process. Now there's some things that I love and some things that I hate about this. So let's start with what I hate first. I don't like that I have to have the needle because the pressure builds up. I don't love how it becomes a science on how long to put the paper in and how, how quickly you have to pull it out. Oh, and I don't love how the solution takes forever to set up. Now knowing that, I can fix those problems uh, on my own. And so here's where I think it's great. But I could see doing this for like a STEM activity at school or with an elementary class or at a party or even just as a family activity like we did it where you plan for it and instead of going out to do something, going to the zoo or whatever, you have this kit and you exhaust the whole kit in one sitting or maybe in two where you make up a lot of the solution, have it ready to go and then have all your papers ready. It comes with like 20 papers. It's just normal paper so you can use your own paper too. So if you're gonna do it that way, then you can have like 10, 15 people do it in one sitting put your papers out to dry overnight, give it to them the next day. So this would work awesome in an elementary school classroom, I think a kindergarten classroom. I taught elementary school for a while and I, th I think that this would work really well um, in almost any grade. It's a fun activity. So for a class party or just for a science experiment, mixing with colors and, and trying different designs, trying to mix two colors together, things like that. So fun product. Um, all four of my kids enjoyed doing it. They asked, when can we do it again? And so it is something that if you know what you're doing, it's super fun. If you don't, you're gonna be frustrated. So that's my recommendation. All right, thanks, bye.